All right, for the digestive and respiratory system on the pig, we'll see the external nares, the external nose holes there, uh, the tongue, and then you've got the hard palate where you see the ridges, made of palatine bone, palatine process, and then the soft palate in the back, we have our canine teeth. Beneath the tongue, we'll be able to find the sublingual glands, or the sublingual salivary glands on the side of the face, this large gland here, that would be the parotid gland. And I got a little happy with this one, but what's left of this gland, right under the mandible, would be the submandibular gland. And so I've pulled out the larynx here. So this is the thyroid cartilage. You'll see up top, what was going to be the hyoid bone is still a good bit cartilage. Pull this back and you'll see this flap here is the epiglottis covering the hole, the glottis. In the back, we'll see the esophagus. So the esophagus is posterior to the trachea. And then down here, this course, this whole tube, the rings of cartilage is the trachea, the esophagus directly posterior to it. So the thyroid cartilage made of hyaline cartilage, epiglottis made of elastic cartilage. Now the very first ring of cartilage on the trachea is the cricoid cartilage. It's that soft spot in between the two, the cricothyroid ligament. All right, we'll follow the trachea all the way down till we'll see it splits. The split bifurcation point, that is the carina. It's off to the right primary bronchus, right primary bronchus, right main bronchus. Any of those, okay? Left main bronchus or left primary bronchus. And those will divide further. Over here, we'll see the left secondary bronchi. And the, Let's see, we're going to have on the right side, superior, middle, and inferior lobes. So three lobes on the right in most cases, except for cases of situs inversus or dextrocardia. Let me get the left side up out of here. Fumes are killing me. We'll see left superior lobe and then the left inferior lobe. So just two on the left because this feature, the cardiac notch, so the heart is crowding out the left side, so just two lobes. And then all the way down to the diaphragm, the quiet breathing muscle. So continuing on down, and we're running across the liver here. If we lift that up, we see the gallbladder. I have already removed the stomach that would be right up in here. Just like that with a greater curvature down here, lesser curvature on the inside. The esophagus would enter here. It's thick down here. This would be where the pyloric sphincter is found in the pyloric region. It's the inside of the pyloric sphincter. And looking back down in there, the folds inside the stomach would be the rugae. <clears throat> so a little difficult to make out the regions of the stomach here, unless I can get it fit. Oh, there we go. So the cardia, the fundus, where it kind of comes back up here, the body, and then down into the pyloric region or pylorus. So the first part of the small intestines would be the duodenum. And out here in the middle area would be jejunum. And we'll see a good shot of the mesentery here, that web-like stuff between the intestines. And then down towards the end of the small intestines, the last region, would be the ileum. And we'll see that best, if I can feel there, where the ileum runs into the cecum. It's that area right there running into the cecum, this larger area. And I'm not sure if we'll be able to make this out or not. This might be a little bit messy still. There we go, little things sticking up right there. The ileocecal valve. All right, that runs into our spiral colon, which would eventually run down into the rectum. We'll see, only other thing that I can think of that I forgot a little bit of chewed bubblegum looking gray stuff here. That is the pancreas. Okay. 